So uh, we were talking history as we uh, started, and uh, it might be reasonable to uh, identify that in 1910, uh, this book was published uh, in the British Journal of Psychiatry, uh, showing uh, the effect of lactobacilli on melancholia. Um, we seem to, uh, uh, there's very little evidence in this situation, uh, but my talk will, uh, I think, suggest that there are many opportunities now uh, for this to come full circle. When we look at uh, gut microbes uh, and we look at the effects uh, that they have, they have effects on each other, they have effects on the local environment, on the local epithelium, which is turning out to be uh, extremely important. Uh, we are beginning to suspect that the epithelium is what is transducing the signals uh, to uh, promote systemic effects on immune, endocrine, and uh, nervous systems. But this is not a one-way street. Uh, it goes both ways, and I won't spend much time, uh, but it is clear uh, from work done by Mark White and various others uh, that the nervous system can also affect uh, the, microbial, uh, the microbiome uh, in uh, many different ways. This cartoon does, in fact, suggest the same thing. Uh, it identifies that uh, bacteria actually are the driver uh, for the immune system, certainly in the local uh, immune system. Uh, in the gut, but what I want to uh, emphasize is that anatomically uh, the nervous system immediately below the epithelium and the dendritic cell population that drives the immune system uh, is actually communicating anatomically and certainly this talk is occurring uh, all the time. So it is not possible to dissociate effects that I will describe from effects on the immune system, uh, on the nervous system, and the nervous system on the immune system. The lumen uh, uh, is where uh, the bugs uh, basically are, and as I say, they're affected by the short chain fatty acids, also by gases uh, which themselves are neurotransmitters, such as nitric oxide, uh, hydrogen sulfide, and carbon monoxide, which is extremely important in affecting the immune system. But uh, the effects on the nervous system and then the brain and uh, the HPA axis uh, is uh, one which has come up uh, recently. Most of the work in this area has only occurred in the last uh, very short uh, period of time. Uh, another version of this was uh, shown by the last uh, speaker, uh, basically showing uh, the microbiota products, in this case propionate especially, and acetate, uh, actually promote uh, effects uh, on uh, satiety, appetite, gluconeogenesis, uh, via effects on the nervous system. And butyrate, which I want to focus on for a particular reason, uh, as mentioned uh, earlier, has effects, but it also has effects uh, on gut epithelial cells, which uh, use it for energy and uh, need it for proliferative uh, capacity, on the immune system uh, and the promotion of regulatory T cells, and also the nervous system, since they have particular effects. And in fact, uh, if you inject butyrate uh, into uh, a rodent, uh, you can actually uh, promote anti-anxiety-like uh, uh, behavior uh, via uh, particular effects uh, since uh, they, they are histone deacetylase inhibitors and very potent uh, in this effect. Uh, many uh, specific bacteria make butyrate. This is a uh, recent uh, paper. These are germ-free animals, and on the left you can see uh, the effects on FOXP3, a marker of uh, inhibitory uh, regulator regulation, and inhibition, and the fact that the uh, normal animals uh, have a higher level uh, than the uh, germ-free. But the feeding simply in a germ-free animal with no bacteria whatsoever, of propionate, acetate, or butyrate, or the mixture, promotes the generation of uh, inhibitory uh, uh, immunoregulatory T cells. So simply the, uh, the uh, products themselves of fermentation uh, may have this effect. Nobuyuki Sudo in Japan wrote this uh, landmark paper uh, in 2004 uh, demonstrating that the stress responses in germ-free uh, mice uh, were exaggerated. But what he uh, particularly showed and it has uh, relevance to the uh, comments of the previous speaker, 
uh, was that uh, the change which could be uh, induced by feeding either bacteria from a normal uh, animal uh, into the germ-free or a particular bifidobacterium with monosociation uh, could in fact change this back to normal, but only if this was given in early development. So this is, a, this is clear evidence of the programming that was referred to earlier. A word of caution on the programming, because in the human uh, and in the clinical situation, this is a controversial area, and it is not clear uh, that programming in this respect uh, uh, is uh, the same uh, in the human. Many, uh, many of us have now shown that if you treat uh, a normal animal with a probiotic, uh, and this is very species and strain dependent, uh, you can actually do exactly the same as Sudo showed and attenuate the HPA axis response. It's felt that the stress response and the exaggerated long-term stress response that occurs, for example, in the human, uh, uh, is the uh, underlying feature uh, in many situations relating to depression, uh, uh, somewhat in anxiety, but certainly uh, in post-traumatic stress disorder. The, uh, very, there is very little evidence as yet uh, in the human, and you may well ask, so what's, uh, what do we uh, bother our time uh, with when we treat uh, mice and show that their anxiety is in fact uh, improved? Uh, so the translation is, uh, is crucial. This paper in 2011 showed uh, that in this case, Calveticus and Lee Longo, when fed to normal uh, uh, women, uh, in fact resulted after uh, a month uh, in promising improvements in three tests of mood, uh, and it also reduced the 24-hour urinary cortisol. This is the only uh, uh, evidence so far uh, in the human that uh, the mouse data that I showed uh, is in fact translatable. So we've been able, uh, especially uh, my colleague Wolfgang Kunz, uh, has been able to use uh, a particular uh, system uh, to look at uh, the enteric nerves and to try and see whether or not the bacteria which are clearly affecting the nervous system uh, uh, are in fact affecting the enteric nervous system. And this is an important uh, component of the pathway uh, whereby uh, the bacteria uh, could then uh, influence uh, uh, basically the brain. He has shown uh, that uh, when it comes to it, we're down to a particular ion channel, which is expressed uh, in a whole variety of different cells and that when we feed a particular lactobacillus rhamnosus, that we can actually show not only this effect on the local nervous system, but also a systemic effect uh, on mast cells T and T cells, and that this uh, channel may underlie uh, the mode of action. So we're down to a specific ion channel now uh, in, uh, the, uh, in the pathway. Masmanian and Casper uh, have shown uh, that the bacteroides fragilis exopolysaccharide actually by itself can recapitulate all of the immunological uh, events uh, which the feeding of the parent organism uh, can, uh, can, can produce. And we've shown that this particular polysaccharide uh, is uh, able in the same way to reproduce exactly uh, what uh, we can show uh, in the nervous system. And uh, this uh, suggests that it is a component or carbohydrate component of, bacteria, of this bacteria at any rate, and possibly others uh, that are commensal or probiotic that actually have the desired effect. We fed uh, this particular organism, the Selactobacillus rhamnosus, uh, to mice. Uh, these are two examples of uh, uh, behavior uh, in these uh, animals and in fact you can see after 28 days that there's a difference and these uh, are in fact uh, anxiolytic or anti-anxiety uh, like uh, behaviors. We looked at uh, a whole series of neurochemical changes uh, which are GABA receptor uh, related and these are related to the tranquilizing effects of 
benzene diazepines. So by feeding on this particular organism for 28 days, we change the behavior, we change the GABA receptors in the brain, and uh, we found that if we cut the vagus nerve, all of these effects uh, were in fact removed. So we're now tracing the effects of a luminal bacterial uh, all the way to the brain via the epithelium, via the uh, immune system, uh, but also by the main uh, vagal trunk. Now this is not the only, we can, we, sorry, we can uh, also recall from the vagus nerve, we can show and, uh, that there is an increased activity in the vagus nerve and uh, we are able now to screen bacteria for this particular activity uh, which we are hoping will in fact be translatable uh, to the human. Now this is not the only way in which these bacteria can actually influence behavior. And this book by uh, Steve Collins and uh, Chemek uh, Berchik, uh, also at our university, took advantage of the fact that the NIH Swiss mice are not anxious, at least in these studies, the Valsi mice are relatively anxious, and they showed that they could do fecal transplants of one to the other, and that within two to three weeks, the behavior of the transplanted recipient Receive, uh, then adopted the behavioral pattern of the donor, which is really quite an extraordinary uh, uh, observation and supports this question of the fact that the bacteria in the intestine uh, have a lot to do uh, with behavior, at least so far in these animals. This is the other version from Emma and Maya, uh, and, uh, locally, that was uh, shown as a, one of the last slides of the previous talk, showing four weeks of fermented milk, uh, which was uh, supplemented with, uh, I think it was five different uh, organisms, I'll show you on the next slide, actually had a difference uh, in terms of functional MR. I'm not going to try and explain this, but the point of the slide was uh, that widespread midbrain activity was reduced in these particular patients in before and after experiments. Uh, and uh, these were normal people, but it clearly shows that the uh, uh, ingestion of fermented milk uh, in itself, supplemented with these bacteria, uh, in fact, could change uh, behavior. This is the only such study so far uh, in, uh, in the human of, of a similar nature. Now these organisms make various things. They make many neurotransmitters. They make GABA. If we feed a particular bacterium, uh, one way or the other over here, or in fact to be infantis, uh, this is uh, uh, one sold by uh, uh, Gamble as a line, uh, you can actually increase the amount of GABA, which is a major uh, uh, neurotransmitter responsible for inhibitory neurotransmission in the brain. Uh, in, uh, in the fetal samples. We have taken advantage of this uh, to uh, then treat animals. And this is experiments that have been done as yet unpublished by uh, Greg Stanish in uh, Toronto using, uh, again, uh, uh, functional MR, but in this case, uh, MR spectroscopy. So using specific uh, approaches, you can actually quantitate in uh, vivo, the amount of GABA uh, and other neurotransmitters in the brain uh, in uh, a, a living normal animal. And you can see that in this case, GABA in the prefrontal cortex is highly elevated, uh, but it only rises at this point uh, in uh, uh, four, at four weeks or 28 days and reverts to normal, suggesting that the effects are limited they're time dependent and dependent on the presence uh, of the effects uh, of the starting uh, probiotic. This is, uh, this is uh, 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 another example, but looking at something entirely different. Uh, glutamate, uh, another uh, important molecule which affects brain uh, neurotransmission. Here you see that the effects are, are already at two weeks of feeding. Uh, up at four weeks, but even at the end of uh, eight weeks, we stop at four weeks, uh, these uh, particular uh, modifiers of uh, neurotransmission are in fact still elevated. There's much to be learned uh, from uh, this, type of, uh, this type of experiment. 
So lastly, I just want to mention uh, this uh, recent uh, observation in the paper by uh, uh, Sarkis Masmanian on uh, basically on autism, which is an increasing problem in uh, uh, basically in uh, uh, pediatrics and, uh, and in our population and our population at large. <coughs> they did uh, an interesting, uh, uh, used an interesting model. This is a model of autism, it's not autism uh, in itself, but it says some very interesting things. In this particular case, this model is a, is a, a viral uh, mimic of poly-IC given at day 12.5 in a pregnant uh, so this is in and during pregnancy, this, this uh, is injected. And then uh, they look at uh, various behaviors. In this case, it's mild ovarian, uh, an example of stereotypic behavior. And you can see that after the poly uh, and within a very short time, uh, they in fact uh, have this stereotypic, increased stereotypic behavior. Now, if they give this B fragilis, which is the, uh, the bacterium that I described earlier, um, which uh, I showed you also the PSA, uh, the component of uh, the, uh, exo the exopolysaccharide component, uh, if they give the bacteria uh, beforehand, immediately after birth to the mother and, uh, and offspring, uh, this is reduced to normal. So it, it's a long, it's, there's a lot of more information. I haven't got time to describe it. It's a model that's produced a lot of uh, uh, interest, uh, basically suggesting that at least in this model, uh, the, uh, the uh, incidence of viral infection uh, in uh, the course of pregnancy may produce lasting effects, uh, which are in fact potentially reversible uh, by a particular bacteria. So this is my last slide, uh, saying that in fact probiotics, uh, different uh, uh, effectors, which change the bacteria in the lumen of the gut through all sorts of different mechanisms, uh, which uh, I can uh, add to in from this slide, affect the nervous, the immune, and the endocrine systems. These are systems which each affect the other. These are very complex, but in fact, behavior, mood, uh, the stress response can all be shown to be effective. And many of us are now engaged in trying to translate these uh, interesting results uh, into uh, clinical, uh, uh, into the clinical situation. But I think uh, this is a, uh, an example of a topic that won't go away. It's a hot topic and it will be uh, produce uh, some interesting uh, further information uh, which uh, will be brought to you uh, in the next uh, few months and years. Thanks very much.